The following is singles contest is your final quarterfinal round matchup in the tournament to determine the first ever PCW champion, the referee Troy Davis. Final quarter, final round matchup of the title tournament. And this is one that uh, I think most people have been anticipating all day long. And this also has my favorite to win the whole thing. Wait, what? What are you talking you heard, about? I told you earlier who my favorite is there in this match. You're on your third pick, and no, we're in the fourth match. Th those were all preliminary picks. I was trying to work out the system. I got an abacus. Well, between your abacus and Gory's atticus, we have a lot of unwanted things around this tournament, but Gannon Jones Jr. has earned his opportunity here tonight without a doubt. Gannon only has one blemish in his win-loss record in PCW, and that comes at the hands of Ricky Shane Page, and those two gentlemen beat the hell out of each other for the better part of 15 minutes. Well, Joe, stop me if you've heard this one before, but 6'5", over 250 pounds, can dominate like a monster and can, if need be, fly like a cruiserweight. That's what you get with Gannon Jones Jr. And his opponent. And this is the first time we've seen Gannon since Ricky Shane, the Ricky Shane Page match. What frame of mind will Gannon be in? And you talk about frame of mind, the frenetic energy of Andrew Palace. Last time we saw him, he was bleeding buckets, his head and face and body completely covered in red. Andrew Palace survived Remy LeVay in a no disqualification matchup. Thumbtacks and weapons abounded, but it was a major, major momentum boost in his war with the culmination. But is he 100% leading into a tournament where he could potentially have three matches tonight? Well, that's what I was just going to say. The frame of mind for Gannon Jones Jr. is simple. Avenge the loss, but he needs to put that behind him. That match has already been completed. He can't do anything about it. Yes, it's an L for him, but it's his first one, and he needs to move on from that. He needs to focus on the task at hand, which is Andrew Palace. And you said it yourself. I don't know if Andrew Palace, you seem to be a little afraid there by, of Wayne Palmer. I can certainly understand that. But he, he, he needs to make sure that he's 100% because we saw – everything that he went through with Remy. We know what the issues he's had with, with the combination. And, and he's got Gannon Jones Jr. I would say the unluck of the draw for Andrew Palace. Well, hopefully Andrew Palace is not coming into this tournament with uh, rose-colored goggles, let's say. No, rose-colored. I want to know what's in Do you check those goggles? There could be some substance in there, Joe. What does that even mean? Like, like performance-enhancing eye drops or something. You want me to check a pair of goggles for eye drops? Yes. I'll get right you, on that. You make it sound silly. We will we will bring it up in the meeting Monday morning. Can I come? Check out this stare down. It's clear to see where the size advantage lies. And it's clear to see where the confidence advantage lies. Because Gannon Jones Jr., much like a Chris LaRusso, I think already believes he's good enough to be the champion. And this tournament's a formality. Well, like Chris, I'm going to have to agree. You know, I would have picked Chris as a favorite, but i, I got to give the edge to Gannon. What of? Well, you know, I'm going to give the edge to Gannon here because Gannon has that size advantage. And, and Look at this. Andrew Palace with an arm drag. Great way to neutralize the size of Gannon Jones Jr. has rocked in the early moments. And, and we know he has the size advantage, does he? And we know he has, the, the obviously, the reach advantage. And he has that power advantage. Oh, my God. He just cut Palace in, in midair and midstream and mid-run. It's like he knew what I, it's like he knew what I was saying, Joe. You know, I should go down there and manage it. Can I go down there? Please real quick? stay here. I never thought I'd say this, but please stay next to me. Duck of the clothesline and Andrew Palace with a satellite head scissors. Beautifully done. Palace has come in ready to counterbalance the power attack of Gannon with agility and speed. And Gannon needs a breather, but Palace will not give it to him. Palace flies with a suit. Oh my god. Well, Joe, there's that power. Jeez! 
Well, you know, for for Palace, it was going one of two ways. He was either going to hit, well, one of three ways. He was going to hit the floor, he was going to land in the first row, or he was going to hit that that ring apron. That's the hardest part of the ring. There's no give there. It's, it's wood and steel. Not me. I'm up here with you. It's wood and steel and no give whatsoever. Oh, well, Palace is fighting back, though. Yeah, you could see Palace's body just violently bounce off of the ring. No give in the ring. Palace's body it was almost like a mild car crash. And Gannon breaks the count smartly. And is just smothering Palace with offense at this point. This is what makes Gannon Jones Jr. so dangerous. When he gets in the zone, he doesn't let up. And, you know, Gannon, I talked to him earlier, and I said, you know, what does this mean to be the PCW champion? What does it mean to hold the PCW championship? And he said, you know, Ben, he calls me Ben. If we're, we're friends. You can't. But he does. And he said, you know, Ben, this to me is everything because it just goes to show that Pittsburgh dominates. We dominate in football. We dominate in hockey. We dominate in baseball. We dominate in hockey, and we're going to dominate here in PCW. And it's going to, oh, great. Now he's going to, to beat up uh, beat up uh, the Cheeks over here. <laughs> cheeks with the mullet. That's what I call him. The guy panhandles for quarters outside. He does not. Took off his coat. Sit, took off his coat. What's he going to do? He needs to put that thing What's back on. What's he going to do? He's apparently created a distraction for Palace who sits getting into the guardrail. I think that's, I Thanks, think that's, pal. that's Palace's uncle. I'm it is sure, not. I'm pretty sure it's Palace's uncle. It's Uncle Cheeks. Well, Uncle Cheeks is going to cheer on his nephew to potentially a quarterfinal round victory. Uh, oh, Gannon caught him coming in. You know, if you search Cheeks Palace, his police report. Cover, please. Two count good. only. Gannon feels the, that he is the pro wrestling all-star, and uh, really he exudes it in the way he carries himself, the way he walks, the way he talks. And, Gannon just feels like he's a bit more special of an athlete than everybody else in that locker room. And when it comes down to it, he may be. But uh, Gannon's attitude and that prima donna mentality sometimes comes back to haunt him. That's just the thing. He doesn't... To count? No. He doesn't just feel that he's pro wrestling's all-star. He is pro wrestling's all-star. And again, there's no shame in losing to Ricky Shane Page. And before... The Ricky Shane Page match, Gannon's record was absolutely spotless. So we cannot argue with the success that Gannon has experienced here at PCW. And what better way to avenge that loss than becoming the PCW champion? Now, going through Andrew Palace, we saw what Andrew Palace had. Joe, is there any way, any way, shape, or form that Palace is 100%? I can't. I can't see that, no. I mean, we saw just the... the Two in, no. We just saw the, the blood loss, the punishment that he took... From Remy, it's it's almost I don't want to say lucky, because you're not lucky when you're going up against a competitor like Andrew Palace, but it does behoove Gannon. Oh, oof, is it just that hard whip into the buckle. It does behoove Gannon to hopefully he studied that and he could find a weakness in Andrew Palace's game. You know, maybe after he can go slap Cheeks Palace around too. Gannon feeling pretty good about himself right now. See, he just took, it's like the man hears me. He just said, hey, Cheeks, I'm going to smack that uh, raggedy mullet off the back of your head. And I'm going to steal your hat. Well, it gives Palace an opening again here. And again, this is Gannon's whole uh, uh, M.O. about Pittsburgh being superior to Cleveland and that, things of that nature. Look at the full extension of the leg. Palace, God, nowhere to go there. He was practically stretched outside the ring. And that's the advantage I said earlier about that reach advantage. Not only uh, wingspan with the arms as rights and lefts, but also the feet as well. And that's taking some out of Palace as well, using that uh, cranium as a weapon. Jeez. Or what do you call it? The occipital protuberance of deltitude or something? That's only a specific part of the head. Oh. But how about that full body slam by Gannon a moment ago? Missing the elbow, but before that, Gannon was making it look positively effortless. You know, you talked about earlier about Sonny Vice never giving up. I We see a, that exact same thing with Palace. Palace with a roll-up. I think he had a, well, I thought he had a hand. Wait a minute, Hardy and Driver. Hardy and Driver will do it. Gannon knows it. Gannon elbows his way free. And we were about five seconds from the end of that matchup there. Gannon had not elbowed his way out. And now, Palace, the shotgun drop kick. Gannon in trouble. Can Palace follow through? Knee right to the head. Palace attempting a knockout blow. But I don't think Palace has the wherewithal to really get over there for a cover right now. He's still recovering. Trying to pull himself up on those ropes. 
you know, as as both men obviously have a, a full great head of hair here, it, what would be really smart by Ganon is if he could just tie Palace's hair up in the corner. Look at this! Palace with the knees! You know, maybe we're seeing a little bit different side of Palace after what we saw against Remy last month. Maybe a little bit more uh, reckless nature of Andrew Palace. Well, say, you know, you tie Palace's hair up in the corner, you lay in some rights and lefts, you lay in some fists, you lay in maybe a, a kick to the face or two, maybe break that nose, break a few fingers, and then and then you got a clear advantage. Well, here comes Andrew Palace. He's looking to take a chance here. They have paid off for the most part. You see a welt forming on the back of Andrew Palace at this point. You can see the damage Ganon has done as Ganon, the all-star athlete, meets Palace head on in the second turnbuckle, but takes a tumble to the canvas. And Palace going to fly with a headbutt. That thick cranium connects. Will it be all? No, Ganon the shoulder up. You know, I, I really question the the offense of Andrew Palace at this point, using that head as a weapon. I mean, we know that it is, it is an empty vessel, truly, for him to be able to use as a weapon. Uh, you know what? I think his hair actually should be a, an international object and should be grounds for disqualification. What are you talking about vessels and international objects? I want to talk about maybe a, a fireman's carry. That's the most random sentence I've ever heard. Again, it elbows his way free, belly to belly! And again, Gannon, so seamless and effortless in everything he does offensively. Well, when you're an all-star, and it's not just this, it's kind of everything he does from a, from a sporting background. Oof. And that was just a sign of disrespect. And I told you earlier, a guy 6'5", that can fly when he has to, and that's what we're going to see right now, Joe. And this is the time when Gannon gets a little bit too big for his britches because nobody's there on the moonsault. And Gannon was looking for style points. He was looking to show off, and Andrew Palace read the play. And I'll tell you, if he was there, that would have been it. There's no way Andrew Palace would have gotten up from that. Hurry, driver coming. No, Gannon counters. Oh, I thought Gannon was, was done for, but Gannon, again, impressing everybody. Sidewalk slam in a near fall. Well, Gannon was smart. He's obviously scouted the hernia driver. He obviously knows what to look for. And it's amazing recovery on the part of Gannon after just missing that moonsault. Well, I'll tell you, he, he flew high in that air. That's not, uh, that's not a, a, a soft landing, especially when you're 6'5 and flying that high in that velocity and hitting that mat. But Gannon, a little bit worse for wear, but not compared to Andrew Powell's. Firmly in control right now. And my favorite is getting ready to move on. Joe, get ready to, to talk about how he wins. Get ready for that. It's coming up. Get ready. Get ready. Get Palace excited. does not see it coming. Gannon is measuring. Out of the way of the kick. Palace trying to navigate Gannon. Easier said than done. And Gannon just deposits him overhead. Oh, well, Palace is in a bad way now. That suplex into the cutter. Gannon's going to beat him here. No, Andrew Palace counters. Signature move for signature move. The hurting and driver connects. And Andrew Palace, was that three? No, it was two. No, that was two. Joe, it was two. That was three. Oh, shit. Andrew Palace got three. I'm so excited. I apologize for talking over Pedro, but Andrew Palace got a count of three. BC still, you're looking at me like Gannon kicked out, but the official disagrees. Well, oh, Pedro, referee, Joe, who do you hire referees around here? Or what? I, I, that was two, is what I was trying to say. Don't laugh at me. Hey, Gannon may have kicked out a 3.1 or something like that, but the official says that when the hand hit the third time, Gannon's shoulder blades were still flat. Andrew Palace and his goggles move on to the semifinal round. What a story this could be. Gannon Jones, once again, maybe took this tournament, took his place a little bit for granted. But Andrew Palace is going to move on, and it's not going to get any easier because he has Jason Kincaid in the semifinals.